Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuang. Today, we're going to introduce Xin Chuan the Sinraptor. Two species of Sinraptor have been discovered, Sinraptor Dojai from Xinjiang and Sinraptor Hepingensis from Sichuan. This model, Xinchuan is a Sinraptor Hepingensis. In terms of the time, fossils of Sinraptor Hepingensis were discovered earlier. It was one of the earliest large carnivorous dinosaurs, with the most complete fossils discovered in China. Its fossils and those of Yangchuanosaurus also discovered in Sichuan were almost found in the same period. The fossils of Sinraptor Dojai were founded later, at the beginning of this century. Before the discovery of Sinraptor Dojai, Sinraptor Hepingensis had been considered a species of Yangchuanosaurus. It was originally named Yangchuanosaurus Hepingensis at the time, because it was similar to other species of Yangchuanosaurus discovered in Sichuan in terms of place of origin, shape, and anatomical structure. So back then, researchers assigned it as a species of Yangchuanosaurus. But after fossils of Sinraptor Dojai were discovered, people made detailed comparisons and found that Sinraptor Dojai was more similar to Yangchuanosaurus hepingensis in anatomical structure. Therefore, at present, we usually classify Sinraptor Dojai and Sinraptor Hepingensis together in the genus Sinraptor. So now Yangchuanosaurus Hepingensis is renamed Sinraptor Hepingensis. Judging from the fossils, we know that there were big anatomical differences between Sinraptor Hepingensis and Yangchuanosaurus, such as the famous Yangchuanosaurus Shangyuensis. Let's first take a look at its skull, which had a big difference from that of Yangchuanosaurus. Although the skull of Yangchuanosaurus was short and tall, generally it was more square. On the top of Yangchuanosaurus' head, there were two sets of crests on both sides, which were more curved. Generally, Yangchuanosaurus had two sets of crests, at the front and rear, which was much like Allosaurus. But Sinraptor Hepingensis had a big arc, on the top of its head, and further above, there were two crests, extended from its lacrimal horns, we need to pay attention to the structure of this pair of crests. First, there was a small lump above its eyes, which might not be completely connected to the crest or lacrimal horn. It might extend downward like this and form a gap here. Viewed from the side, its lacrimal horns were not developed, which was different from the relatively developed ones of Yangchuanosaurus. It was more different from Allosaurus, which had prominent lacrimal horns. The lacrimal horns of Sinraptor hepingensis were short or even negligible, as they directly extended forward into rod-shaped crests. They directly extended like this, but they were divided into two groups. This is one group, and this is the other. Here, they began to go downward, and form a ridge at the back of its nose, just as this model shows. A ridge was formed downward from here, and its front end was its nostrils. Above its nostrils, these two parts were also extended forward from the crests. Its nasal bones above its nostrils were divided into the left and right parts which also had two prominent bulges. The fossil shows that this part has a rather rough surface, so we have reason to speculate that the upper half of its head was covered by a hard keratin, which was brighter than the color of its skin. Its snout was relatively pointed, looking like this. When it closed its mouth, it looked like smiling. Its teeth were not big. It could open its mouth very wide. Its face gave us a feeling that it was cunning. Its eyes were very small. The shape of its skull was quite different from that of Yangchuanosaurus. Its head was pointed, with a big curve at the upper part, and it was more like Sinraptor Dojai. The body structure of Sinraptor hepingensis was quite different from that of Yangchuanosaurus. Sinraptor hepingensis had a long neck. You can see from the model that its neck is longer than its head. The most special thing was that it had a very short trunk. The fossils of Sinraptor hepingensis were well preserved that contained the almost intact spine and most of its tail. It showed a unique feature among theropods. It had a pointed and big head and a long neck. Its trunk was short and narrow. According to the radian of its ribs, we can speculate that the width of its trunk was less than one meter. Viewed from above, it is like this. 
the whole trunk was around 1.5 meters long, but Yangcharonosaurus was just the opposite. Yangcharonosaurus had a short neck but a long trunk. This is the big difference between the two dinosaurs. Besides, its pelvis was long, and its ilium had the same length as its head. This was a common feature of many theropods as long as their head was not so weird. For example, the tyrannosaurs and allosaurids, the length of their skulls was similar to that of their pelvis. Another feature was that it had a particularly strange tail. The tail of theropods was thick at the root, and gradually became thin toward the end. But the tail of Synraptor hepingensis suddenly became thin in the middle, like this. We made this conclusion based on its well-preserved tail fossil. We can see that the fossils preserved a lot of hemal arches, the structure at the lower part of its tail. Its hemal arches were very long near the root of its tail. There are not too many changes in this area. They gradually became shorter, but here, the hemal arches suddenly become very short, and the bottom of some completely disappeared, with only the upper bridge-like structure connected to its tail. This structure resembles that of the tail end of most dinosaurs, forming a thin and long rod-like shape. That is, one distinctive feature of Synraptor hepingensis. Its legs were preserved well too. From the known materials, we can speculate the length of its leg. Although only the upper half of its leg was preserved, we can figure out the general appearance of its leg according to the size of its femur and pelvis. According to the width of its pelvis, we can restore the shape of its leg. It had a triangular thigh fully covered with muscles. Its shank was muscular too. Although no fossil of its feet was uncovered, probably like other theropods, it had the typical foot of carnivorous dinosaurs with three big toes, at the end of which there were thick and big claws. Due to the long time walking, the end of its claws was worn flat. It had a small first toe that connected to the rear part. The claw on the first toe was like a hook and relatively sharper. Its forelimbs were preserved not well, but we can also deduce them. Its forelimbs were relatively big and had a certain ability to grasp. When it was relaxed, its two hands would naturally hang down. In past restorations, its shoulder blades were often turned sideways, which caused its chest cavity to look very narrow and its neck to look very thin, but now we know that if we try to restore its shoulder blades along the curve of its ribs, they were more vertical than speculated. This enabled the two coracoids at the front to merge to form a complete chest, connected to a furcula at the upper part. If looking at the past restorations, you'll find that the two coracoids were far apart, because no furcula was discovered in the early years. Now we know that most theropods had a furcula in the middle. If they wanted to keep the furcula, the two coracoids must fuse with the furcula serving as a bridge. The same goes for this dinosaur, which caused the front part of its trunk to be very wide. The muscles at the lower part of its neck were connected to the coracoids and shoulder blades so that its neck looked thick and strong too. On this model, we made its two arms hang down normally. Like Allosaurus, its forelimbs were not so degenerated as those of late Carcharodontosaurids. They were still big. At the end of its big forelimbs, there were sharp and long claws. According to the fossil, the claws of this dinosaur were not short. Besides, outside, there was a keratinous sheath structure that could grow out one third longer, and this made its claws look even longer. Generally, its first claw was the longest, so when we did the reconstruction, we made its first claw relatively long. The second one was a little shorter, and the third one was the shortest. These three fingers were in a stage of degeneration. The first finger had one knuckle, the second one had two knuckles, and the third one had three knuckles with pads inside. Its pads of fingers were relatively gentle, unlike many birds' claws. It's a pity that no skin fossil of Synraptor was preserved, but according to the skin of Allosaurus, its close relative, we can infer that most parts of its body were covered with tiny scales, in size of a few millimeters. Between these scales, there might be some bigger ones, just as the model shows. Along its back, we made a row of pointed spikes that resembled those of iguanas. There was no direct fossil evidence of these spikes, 
but the dorsal side of the spine of such dinosaurs was relatively rough, perhaps because, besides the tendons, it also connected to other hard structures such as this spike-like structure, when it was alive. That is just a speculation. Good, the above concludes our introduction of Xinchuan the Sinraptor.